recording. Perfect. So good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for the third installment in the Fix That Home Repair series on plumbing basics. My name is Jen Tremon, and I'm with the Atlanta Beltline Partnership. We are the nonprofit entity for the Atlanta Beltline. The Fix That series is part of our Home Empower Workshop series, where we work with partners to deliver informational workshops to help homeowners and renters feel more secure in their homes. Past topics have included things such as evictions and renters' rights, how to appeal your property tax assessment, how to buy a home, and much more. I'm absolutely delighted to be partnering with the Atlanta Community Tool Bank, House Proud, and Atlanta Land Trust on the Fix That home repair series to teach you guys some basic home skills to save money on repairs and be safer inside your homes. I'm also really excited to welcome Heads Plumbing tonight who are our experts in the field and they will be here to answer all your burning plumbing questions. So before we kick it off to them for the training portion, just a couple of notes for logistics. We will do some really quick introductions with our partners tonight and then pass it over to Heads Plumbing to get to the nitty gritty of all the plumbing details. And afterwards, we will have a chance to answer some Q&A. So just enter your questions into the chat box if you're on Zoom or into the comment section on Facebook Live and we'll get to as many as we can during our time. And then just make sure you pay attention to the email you'll get from me tomorrow morning with the recording and a survey to let us know how you enjoyed tonight. You'll also have more information on how to contact tonight's presenters and a fabulous partnership we're doing with the Community Tool Bank on how to help you guys rent some tools. And then 10 of you are also going to be entered into a randomized giveaway to have a bucket full of some plumbing essentials. So just stay tuned for an email from me tomorrow morning. And with that, I will turn it over to Lisa with House Proud to say hello. Thanks. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that, Jen. Um, my name is Lisa Flowers Jones. I'm the executive director of House Proud Atlanta. We are a small nonprofit based out of Southwest Atlanta that does no cost repairs for seniors, the disabled, and veterans, anything to keep them warm, safe, and dry. Uh, we do lots of roofing, plumbing, electrical, floor stabilization, you name it, and have been delivering quite a few safety kits to seniors in addition uh, in the midst of COVID. Um, right now we have funding for Atlanta's West Side, Neighborhood Planning Unit V, which is the area right around uh, Turner Field, around the old Turner Field uh, that's not far from Zoo Atlanta, and for veterans. So if you or your neighbor, anyone you know, fits into any of those categories, uh, go to housecrowdatlanta.org to find out more about us and to um, send us an email, let us know if there are folks that might need some help. Um, just wanted to give a special shout out tonight to Heads Plumbing Sales and Service. Um, House Proud has been using this particular plumber, uh, plumber is one of our plumbers for probably about a decade now and have been extremely pleased. Um, they have a big, big heart for seniors and we really love working with them. So I just wanna say thank you to our friends at Heads for being willing to do this section of the Fix That series. So thanks you guys for listening and I'm looking forward to tonight's presentation. Hi, good evening, everybody. My name is Karen Babineau, and I'm the stewardship manager at the Atlanta Land Trust. Uh, the Atlanta Land Trust is a nonprofit organization that is a tool for affordable housing. We acquire and steward land and build homes that are affordable to over 80% of our uh, the area median income. Buyers with eight with that are under 80% of the area median income for Atlanta. Um, I just... Karen, you accidentally muted yourself. Sorry. I wanted to just uh, let everyone know that we hold a monthly buyer information session. And that the next one is Saturday, November 14th. Um, and it starts at 10 a.m. And we also have a referendum that we're supporting on the um, city of Atlanta uh, ballot, which is to support community land trusts uh, by allowing them to have the same homestead exemption as a normal homeowner has. So we'd like your support on that. And of course, you hear my 
I put my information in the chat, including my phone number and email. You can contact me. Happy to be here tonight. These are always fun. Great, thank you. CJ, do you want to do a quick introduction of the tool bank? Thank you so much, Jen. I'm really happy to be here tonight. And I'm happy that that uh, Heads Plumbing is, is leading this and, and taking that on. And the Atlanta Community Tool Bank is a nonprofit that loans tools out to other nonprofits for service projects. We also have an educational arm, which is how we got involved in this series. And um, I hope you guys have a good experience with Heads Plumbing, and I know they have a good presentation for you. So, thank you. Great. Thank you, everyone. And Khadija Janandari, take it away. Awesome. Um, first of all, I want to say good evening. And on behalf of Heads Plumbing Sales and Service, I would like to thank each of and every one of you for attending today's webinar this evening. Uh, we, we want you to know that we understand your home is your heart. It's the one place you start and end each day, just as our homes are the one place we start and end each day. And the last thing you want to come home to is a plumbing problem. Plumbing issues, they leave you feeling helpless. We feel the same way when we have to take one of our service trucks to an auto mechanic. We worry if the mechanic will upsell their service, fix it right the first time, and explain our problem so that it makes sense to us. That's why Heads Plumbing, our top priority is customer satisfaction. For you see, we don't want to be your one-time plumber. We want to be your every-time plumbing company. We want to be the plumbing company that you never hesitate to call because you know, like, and trust us. You know our reputation. Atlanta's experienced plumber since 1981. You like our technicians. They treat their, your home as if it's their own. You trust our company. Calling a plumber shouldn't cost you a paycheck. Now that you know the company, allow me to introduce you to the entrepreneur behind the company, Odari Head. Odari is a state licensed plumber since 2006. Odari grew up on a plumbing truck, working under his father, Phoenix Head Jr., a state licensed plum plumber himself, and his grandfather, Phoenix Head Senior. And for almost four decades, that's four decades later, an alum of Westlake High School and Tuskegee University, Odari serves as the leader of one of Georgia's most historic plumbing companies. A plumbing company started by his mother, Sheila B. Head, and father in 1981. And for the first time this summer, the next generation of plumbers with the surname of Head, joined the plumbing ranks as O'Diary hired his son to start his plumbing apprenticeship at the young age of 13. So without further ado, allow me to introduce you the man behind the business, O'Diary Head, as he teaches you how to detect and repair a leaky toilet. It's a great introduction. O'Diary, do you wanna say any words before I share the video? Yes, I would like to, first of all, thank everyone for having us this evening. Um, I also thank my sister. She did a, a fabulous job of uh, hyping her brother up. Um, and we look forward to teaching you guys a few tips to help with your plumbing repairs. Great, so we will be showing a 15 minute video um, featuring Adari and then afterwards we'll have a chance for you guys to ask questions. So I'll get this going. My name is Odari Head with Head's Plumbing Sales and Service Inc. I'm a third generation plumber, um, family owned business. We've been in business since 1981. And today I'm going to discuss uh, one of our number one calls that we get from clients in regards to 
a high water bill. The number one corporate that causes a high water bill is a running toilet. Very simple and easy to fit solution that can save you hundreds on your water bill. Stay tuned. Today we're going to test if you have a running or leaking toilet. You will need some food coloring, simple food coloring you can get from the grocery store, dollar store. First you will take the lid off the back of the tank. Next you will identify your fill valve and your flapper seal. Once you have identified those items, then you flush the toilet. And we're going to wait for the flapper to drop that down to seal the water from the tank. Once that drops down, take you a few drops of food coloring. As you see, as the water fills up, the tank turns blue. And you wait for the tank to completely fill up. Okay, the next step would be to put the lid back onto the tank you will open up the toilet seat and come back about 10 to 15 minutes if you have blue dye in this bowl then that's a sign that you have a bad flapper so we'll see you guys in about 10 to 15 minutes all right team so this would be the end result if we had a leaking flapper. As you can see, our bowl is, is not clear. We have the blue dye in the bowl part of your toilet, and that's letting us know that we need to replace our flapper. Next, I will show you guys how to replace your flapper on your toilet. So these are the items that we will need to repair our leaking or running toilet. Number one would be the fill valve. And you can get these at Home Depot, Lowe's, or any of your hardware store, stores. Next, you will need a flapper. Most toilets um, take a two inch flapper with, it, with a chain. Next, you will need a pair of pliers a sponge and some gloves and a bucket to catch your excess water out of the tank. All right, first thing we're going to do, we've already removed our lid safely, placed it out of the way so we won't knock it over and break it. Next, we will identify our water cutoff to turn off the water supply to the toilet. We will turn this, and then we will flush our toilet to get all the water out of the tank. And you can just hold the flapper open with the handle until all the water has drained out the tank. Next step would be to disconnect your water supply. Um, when you take this loose, you will get some water to drop out of the connection. So what I like to do is just place a little rag or something just to catch. It shouldn't be a lot of water, but you will get some. And we're gonna disconnect our water supply from the field there. If it turns, and you twist it off with your hand, like so. And then we're gonna just pull, just like that. Next step, we're gonna take our sponge and our bucket um, because it's still some excess water still in the tank that we need to sponge out so we won't make a mess. So I just take my sponge and just 
you can use a sponge or a shop vac. And all I'm doing is just drying out my tank completely. Okay, once you take your water out your tank, you can just simply raise your toilet seat or your water into the bowl, just like so. All right, now you have a dry tank. Now we're gonna start disassembling our flapper and our fill valve. First up, you wanna disconnect your flapper from the toilet handle like so. And then you want to unhook it from these two, I like to call them J-hook things, like so. Boom. And just like that, that's how you remove your flapper. As you can see, our flapper has signs of wear with the ripper edges, and that's what leads to a leaking or running toilet. So this has a little residue on it, so I just place it inside my bucket like so. Then I'm gonna open up my new flapper. And if you look, you can see, you know, the old flapper is pink, the new one is red looking. So this flapper in the beginning started out just like this. So you can see what water has done to this flapper. Next, we're going the same way we uninstalled the flapper. We're going to install the new flapper the exact same way. You want to hook your J hooks like so. And then you want to hook your chain into your handle like so. Now on the chain, you want to make sure that you don't have too much slack in it because if it does, it will cause the flap to hang up and not seal properly. So you, what I like to do is adjust my hook where only one or two links are hanging down from the flapper. That's your new flapper. Next, we're gonna install, replace this old fill valve. First up, you wanna disconnect it from the refill tube on your flush valve seal. And next, we're gonna remove the nut from the bottom side that is holding this in place. Take your pliers and just twist your nut. After you turn it a half turn, you should be able to unloosen it with your hand. We may have a little residual water still in the bottom of the tank, but we got our rag here to catch it, so that's fine. Just like that, you shake off all your SS water. Then you just place your new, your old flopper in the bag. All right. Next, we're going to install our new flap, new field valve. Take it out the box like so. You will have the, the main field valve, and then you will have your rubber washer, your nut to lock it in place. And this nut here is for if you were to replace your supply line, which our supply line is good, so we won't need this piece. And this is our clip for our refill tube that puts the water back in the bowl. 
So those are the items that you will need. Step one, you could take your clip for your refill tube, insert it into your refill tube, like so. Then you take the other end of your refill tube and you want to insert it right here on your field valve. Alright, so next you want to take your rubber washer and you want to punch the center part out. Just want to, and it should have just peeled right out. Get rid of that, and you want to take this piece, just slide it up on your field valve. Push it all the way to the base of your field valve. Now you're going to install your new field valve, like so. So just you just hand tighten these like so and then you're ready to hook your supply line back up like so get my net one little quarter of a turn make sure we good and tight so, you can drop a little water. Next step, I'm going to clip my refill tube to my flush valve. Like so. And this is the part that puts water back into the bowl. Alright, you verify everything is connected properly. And now the last and final step with the next to last final step, you turn your water back on. And now we want to verify that we have our refill valve set at the proper, proper height. And with that, most, most tanks have a field line inside of the tank to let you know how high the water line. This one is a little faded, but if you look closely, you can see it says water line height. So you want to set your field valve to cut off at this height. If it goes above this height, what will happen, the water will start to run over into your flush valve, which will cause your toilet to run. Okay, as you can see, our water line, our water stop at our water line height, which means that our field valve is properly set. Uh, let's say for instance, if it was too much water or not enough water, the adjustment setting is right here on this particular brand field valve. You have a plus and a minus side. Of course, the minus meaning to reduce the water level, plus means to add more water level. This will vary based on the brand of field valve you install. And the last and final step is we flush our tool. So today we learned how to fix a leaking or running toilet. Again, it's a very simple easy solution uh, to resolve this issue. Hope you guys learned a lot, uh, but if it gets too complicated and you can't get the issue resolved, feel free to give us a call. Our phone number is 404-696-3175. And that's, again, that's Odari Head, and I'm with Heads Plumbing Sales and Service Inc. Great. That was very informative.
So we have a few questions coming into the chat box. Um, but Adari, I don't know if you had any comments after the video or I'm going to start reading questions. If people please feel free to type them in to the chat. Yeah, I, I did see one question, I think, in the chat. I'm not sure how to pull it up from uh, Brandon, looks like, C. Sure, yeah, I can read them to you Okay, that's easiest. So um, we'll start with Brandon since you called him out. So <laughs> do the same repair methods work for a single and dual flush toilets, or are they different? Uh, for this uh, dual first flush toilets, the repair are the same as far as the field valve. Um, the flapper seal, most dual flush toilets, um, they have a flush seal ring versus a flapper. Um, and that will vary by, by brand. Um, some of the common brands we see are Glacier Bay, uh, American Standard, Cola, um, and uh, Toto. So they will vary based on the brand of toilet, but most, I would say about 80% of houses have the typical uh, two inch flapper. This may be a related question based on my very limited knowledge of toilets. But uh, would you use the same method for newer toilets? In my head, newer ones are the dual. Uh, yes, uh, all toilets go come with two working parts. That's gonna be the field valve to put the water in the tank and then the flush valve or flapper seal to release the water out of the tank um, to make the toilet flush. Perfect, so next question. Is sometimes the toilet runs because the fill valve doesn't always rise and fall with the water. Does that mean it should be replaced? Yes, that's a, that's another common issue we, we run into. Some of them will rise up and get stuck where they won't cut off and some of them won't drop that down to put the water back into the tank. So yes, uh, that's a usual sign of wear and tear and we recommend replacing the field valve. Perfect, okay, so another toilet question. Um, we do have some other plumbing questions. So. Um, if it's usually the flapper that deteriorates, can you just replace the flapper? Uh, yes, we can. Yes, you can. Uh, one thing we do recommend to our customers is not to put the blue dye tablets in the uh, tank. That blue ta uh, tablet deteriorates the flapper and the flush valve and the uh, field valve. And it says that on the instructions for the field valve when you replace it, um, the bleach tablets are fine, but the ones that turn the water blue, that will eat up the insides of your toilet. Perfect. Yes, you just answered the question before I read it. Okay, so moving on to some sink-related questions. Okay. Um, we have, how do you know if you need to replace a water line on a faucet? This person has a faucet where the hot water comes out very slowly, but the cold water seems to be fine. That sounds like an issue with the actual supply stop. Um, it could be something as simple as trash in the supply stop. Um, I would start there and kind of work my way up. And it also would depend on if it's a single lever or a two handle faucet as well. Okay. Um, and then from Karen, one of our partners, I love to see you asking questions. Um, ongoing issue with slow water draining in a bathroom sink. Do you re recommend um, the tool to clear the hair from drains or use of liquid drain product? Uh, I will recommend clear the, the stick to clear the hair from the um, drain versus over the liquid hair product. Uh, especially if it's not draining at all. If it's not draining at all, that liquid um, cleaner um, what it does, it gets hard like a bar of soap, and now you end up with a bigger issue. The drain cleaner liquid is good on slow drains, but if it's completely stopped up, then no, I do not recommend that. Uh, another good tip for everyone, um, you can just use some uh, common household bleach. Um, we recommend filling up your kitchen sink, your bathroom sink, um, once a month with hot water, and then just turn it loose at night before you go to bed, that bleach will eat up the bit, build up in bacteria and not allow for the sink to bad, back up as often. You can do that for your tubs, your showers. Um, a lot of people complain about um, the smell coming out the shower drain. That's just chemicals from washing hair products, washing your body over the, 
over the course of time and that stuff starts to smell. So if you fill your shower up, you know, about halfway and just turn it loose, fill it up with hot water and bleach, and just turn it loose at night um, before you go to bed or before you leave out to go to work, that will clear up a lot of drain issues. It's hmm. a handy tip. So we have someone that's having water coming out of the top of their faucet of their sink and is wondering if that's a problem and if so, how to fix it. Uh, with that, the only thing you can do is replace it at that point. <laughs> um, well, along those lines, um, we have a question from someone that has an older home. I'm thinking that it's 70 years home or 70 years old, and they're asking what's the best way to prepare for a renovation. I'm guessing in this case, we mean for plumbing. Um, it, it, it depends. Um, a, a, another common issue we run into is people with septic system and they tend to build right over the top of the septic tank. And then when the septic tank needs service or pumped out, they have to tear the debt back down to access the septic tank. So uh, I would definitely recommend um, where all your emergency shutoff valves are, where identify whether you're on sewer or septic, and if so, where those lines run and not to build on top of those. Okay, so I think that that was our last question. If we want to give it a couple minutes for anyone else to ask some last minute things for our plumbing expert. And Adari, I don't know if you had any other things that came to your mind or any final comments to wrap up while we get final questions. Um, I, the, the biggest thing is uh, we run across is um, people putting stuff in the drain that shouldn't be going down the drain. Um, that could definitely save you guys a lot of money. Only uh, human waste and tissue the only thing that need to go down the toilet. Um, not toothpicks, not dental floss um, pits. Um, We've seen cell phones, toys, Avengers, you know, some of everything. So, you know, just try to keep those items away from the toilet. Ugh, Avengers, can't get you done out of the toilet. <laughs> um, so we do have another question or a couple questions. Um, how can you identify where the sewer line is? Typically, if you're inside the city of Atlanta, um, your sewer line will typically run out the front of your house and go to the street. Uh, in suburban areas, um, if you don't set the tank, it will usually go out the back of your house. So Karen asked a great follow-up question to that um, and how to keep it work, the sewer line from the street to your home working well. Um, it depends on the age. If you, if you have older, a lot of older houses have clay or concrete pipes and a lot of uh, tree roots will get in them. Um, and we have to come out and clean them out. The only way to permanent fix that is to replace the um, sewer line with PVC piping. And that's, um, that's the only way to guarantee that you won't have any sewer backups. Um, on the septic side, we recommend that you get your septic tank pump um, at least every three years, every three to five years. Um, with septic tanks, you can't use any bleach the bleach kills the good bacteria inside the septic tank that eats up the waste, the human waste. So no bleach in the washing machine, no bleach tablets. Bleach is a definitely no-no for a septic system. So um, it's, I may have misunderstood Karen's comment. I think maybe she meant the um, freshwater line coming into the home, but that was good advice anyways. <laughs> Okay, uh, for the water line coming in, if you have copper uh, or CTCS, which is a new plastic pipe that they have, if you have it installed properly, you won't have any issue with your water service line. Uh, copper has a lifetime warranty. The ground can't do anything to copper. It's, it company, it's, it's the most durable product on the market. Okay, so, um... We have a question, if bleach is safe for kitchen sinks with garbage disposals? It is if you're not on septic. So okay. bleach, septic and bleach definitely don't go together. 
No. Okay, so what about in an older home without a dishwasher connection? Do you recommend hiring a plumber for the install? Hmm, that's a tricky question. Uh, nice answer. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's uh, yes. I, I will go with yes because I don't, I don't want any blowback on. Oh, Dara told me I could do it, and I flooded my house and. <laughs> Yes, I, I recommend calling a professional. Good advice. Um, what about an alternative go-to product other than bleach that might be more environmentally friendly? Or for me, I have pets and that like to get in all my things that have um, access to bleach. Uh, they have stuff like a uh, Reddits and basically um, Reddits and um, and they have some kind of uh, is a drain cleaning enzyme. It's kind of like uh, probiotics, uh, you know, that, that's the good bacteria that you have to put in your body. So, so the plumbing system is the same way. You need that good bacteria to eat up the human waste, the, the grease, and the buildup in your plumbing system. Um, and then I, that will be a good alternative to if you're not able to access bleach. Or... So what about baking soda? No, baking soda. Um, baking soda. If you use too much, again, it tends to get hard, like a bar of soap, um, mm -hmm. and it's it's just real hard, especially if you have ca cast iron or metal piping in uh, older homes. It just it just does a number on those. I did not know that. So, any other questions? These are really great. Thank you for I'm learning a lot myself. <laughs> so is vinegar good to put down the drain to deodorize it? Um, I recommend um, older band. They sell that at uh, Home Depot over uh, vinegar. OK. So we have a question about if it is good to test a water supply coming into the home. Um, this person had just purchased a new home and will harsh water mess up pipes? Yes, you can, um, if the home has a shut off valve um, on the main water service line, uh, when it comes into the home, you could shut it off there and then go back to your water meter and your water meter works just like a speedometer on your car. Anytime that dial is moving, then you're being charged for water. So with that water service valve turned off, the, the dial or the newer meters, they have digital meters, they have numbers. All those should be held steady. They shouldn't be moving. The numbers shouldn't be turning. If, if they are moving or turning, that means you have an underground leak on your main water service line coming from the city meter into your home. Okay. Any other questions for Atari? Get a couple seconds, see if anyone's typing. So thank you again to you and Katija for your time. I'm, I really learned a lot and I hope our attendees did as well. We'll have this recording available if you guys need to go refer back on how to fix your toilets. That was definitely helpful. Um, and we'll send out Heads Plumbing information in case you have anything that you guys should not do yourselves. And just stay tuned for our, our email tomorrow. And thank you again, Heads Plumbing, for your time tonight. Thank you, guys. <laughs> have a good night, everyone.